we haven't given you an update about the house, uh, the free house that we're giving away for about seven months now. It's now July. The last time we posted was in January. So I'm guessing that all of you must be dying to know what happened uh, with the plans. So let's go to the house now. <laughs> He's going to drive us off the cliff. Since we're driving, uh, here's a couple more updates. Uh, since August, we have opened the guest, the guest house. So by the time you watched the last video, it had only been open for four months. Now it's been open for a lot more, uh, almost, uh, almost a year now. And I'm very pleased to say that Ryunohara Hatago is now ranked uh, with the top 1% in the world according to Airbnb. Uh, we have had uh, many 5-star reviews uh, consecutively and uh, a lot of the guests have been really cool people who even helped uh, weed and plant in the rice fields. Um, the other update is that um, the rice fields are doing well. We have uh, 5 rice fields now up from 4 and uh, we had many ducks weeding and I say had because sadly a lot of them died and uh, as I'm speaking we only have three ducks now uh, and we've learned a lot of lessons I'll talk about all these duck lessons in the next video um, but yeah uh, guest house is doing well uh, the, um, the rice fields are doing well and we've been running retreats so this year we, we have uh, 12 retreats open uh, where people come in and they enjoy the scenery, they attend workshops, they have all good food. Next year we're going to do 24 and I'll talk about all that. But first, uh, one of the people that's helping make it happen is right behind me. Uh, please meet my new colleague, he's on his first day at work here. Hello everyone. Jeremiah! What's up? So when you first came, what do you do? So when I first came, I was helping out with the free house that we are going to right now. So much to clear, we went to the recycling centre for 15 times. Full loads. I am Dobby number 2 because uh, our slave driver uh, <laughs> makes us slaves, I give you a sock. slaves like Dobby. That's why we a are sock. Dobby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's not a slave driver. <laughs> Uh, don't, don't show everyone where the secret key is. I didn't lock it. <laughs> okay, come in with your shoes. It's not uh, totally clean. Yet. So we're back in the house and uh, what's, ha what's happened so far is that 111 people uh, have signed up for this house. And out of all these people, the volunteer uh, board, there was a group of five people and I, uh, six people and I, we went through the 111 uh, applicants and we decided that five applicants uh, were quite suitable for, uh, for this house. Uh, we selected these people based on the ability to stay here. So do they have a visa or can they get a visa? Uh, do they plan to stay here for most of the year? Uh, do they have the financial ability to restore things like get new tatami mats, um, the leaking roof eye repair, but uh, things like if you want a renovation, do you want the toilet renovated, all that. So we selected people based on how, how much they told us about the, their financial ability also. And uh, it's not a big renovation you need, but you do need some money. So that being said, we interviewed people and uh, we decided on a winner even. So uh, we decided that a family from the UK would get this house. Uh, the dad's uh, from Wakayama uh, originally, and he moved to the UK to work uh, as a carpenter. The, uh, the mom uh, is uh, UK, UK national, um, and uh, she, she loved to move back to Japan because she spent some time here, and uh, she had been home homeschooling her kids. So there were three girls, uh, the three kids were quite interested. Uh, the mom was really interested to come. Uh, the dad was kind of interested in coming and he wanted to even come here and repair the house first before his family moved in. Uh, so that was in January when we announced the decision to that family. Um, but they said also to give them some time because they needed to readjust their life in the UK. They needed to move out uh, to see if they can find a job here. And uh, about two, two months into it, so in March, 
uh, the, the dad uh, decided that this was not the move, the change that he wanted. We didn't go into the, the details about why he didn't want to come here eventually, but I think it's uh, because uh, of uh, jobs. Like he was worried he couldn't get a job here uh, in the countryside. And it's really, really not their fault because uh, to move an entire family from the UK to Japan is no easy decision. So we respect, it, we respect the decision and uh, I have spoken to the volunteer board, the decision board, about what to do with the house. Um, the other two or three people who we interviewed, um, they, uh, okay, so uh, one, of, one, of the couple, one of the people signing up was a professor teaching at a, a private university in Kyoto. So the thing is, uh, this is really far from Kyoto, so um, it's not really, uh, of, we, we felt not really suitable for them to uh, commute six hours to Kyoto uh, and back every week. Uh, so that's, that's the, the, the other one. Um, a third uh, uh, person, uh, he is in the US uh, and he has lived to Japan, in Japan up till I think high school uh, in the south of Japan. Uh, and he is now about to retire, I think, uh, and he wants to move to Japan. Uh, he has a, a, a partner who is in, he's not married to, who is Japanese, and that's the problem we had. Um, we're not, we were not sure if he could actually get a spousal visa to be in Japan in the long term. Uh, one, well, there are two other people, but one other uh, um, applicant was a language school, a uh, Japanese language school, wanted to host their students here when, uh, when they were at a more advanced level of Japanese. The problem was that uh, the coordination needed to have a student come here to stay, or several students to come here to stay, uh, seemed to be quite difficult. The school had enough money to renovate the entire property quite nicely, but we were worried that uh, the school may find it too difficult to keep sending people here uh, and maintain the place for the long term. So, um, based on all these, we decided to hold on to this decision to whether to give the house away or not. Uh, particularly because nearby uh, is a place that um, one of our ex-volunteers may want to turn into a brewery. So this could become staff accommodation in the future. Uh, also, we have several volunteers who are interested to become maybe tour guides in the, on the Kumano Kodo. And we are only about uh, a 20 minute drive away from the start of the uh, Kumano Kodo, the Takijiri. Um, uh, hike up. So uh, we are also holding off for that because uh, some volunteers may be able to stay here even. Uh, that said, uh, if someone's still interested in the house, this house, uh, and they want to stay here in the long term, just write to me uh, on in the comments and uh, we can have a look at your proposal. Uh, you can also just send me a message uh, via email, uh, hello at craftabby.com. So we'll put that in the comments. Uh, in the description. And uh, the other thing I should talk about are the comments in the original video. So uh, I think there were, there were many different, uh, um, well, there were, there were some, I wouldn't say negative, but some comments saying that, oh, anyone who's, who, who moved here is dumb uh, because uh, it's in the middle of nowhere and the house is vacant for a reason. Nobody wants the house. Uh, and uh, along the, those lines are uh, Japan is a declining country. If you think you should move to Japan for a free house, you're mistaken because you'll cost uh, a lot of money in taxes. Uh, I have to say that the taxes are not as expensive as you think. Uh, I pay uh, in inheritance, well, not inheritance tax, but uh, the free house tax. We receive something for free, the gift tax. Uh, I paid about uh, $700, uh, Singapore dollars. So that's about 600 US dollars now. Paid 600 US uh, dollars for the inheritance of this building, and the yearly tax of this house comes up to about 140, no, 120 US dollars. Uh, so that's all the taxes you have to pay, uh, and taxes are not really expensive in Japan, especially out in the countryside. Um, the other thing is that um, I think people are saying, oh, I'm I'm on a mission to take over all the houses in the countryside, and I don't care about what people think here. The thing is, uh, the family who gave this to me, uh, they considered who to give this building to and they said they gave this to me because uh, they can be assured that whoever, whatever I do to this building will not affect the neighbours and will uh, improve the community here. So uh, the objective about get, like, getting a house, I, I don't have to get a house like this but uh, I'm in a position to do something with the house. So. Um, yeah, the, the point of all these videos here is to give it away to someone who can do better with the house. 
um, and not just have it like I can, there, there were several people who wanted to just renovate the house and turn it into an Airbnb uh, but that's not the point of it here it's uh, to have more people who want to actually live here the population is declining all across Japan especially in rural Japan so I think Ryujin Mura, this, this village uh, has, uh, is in a unique position because many places are too far beyond saving uh, the petrol kiosk has, has closed. If you go to Hokkaido, uh, the convenience store cannot dispose of their rubbish uh, even because there's no garbage disposal. And we haven't reached that state. There are still a lot of services. The electricians are still here. There are several carpenters. Uh, there is, uh, the, the snow is being plowed off the roads in winter. Uh, there are several gas companies to provide you gas. So uh, it's not in a state where uh, things would just shut off any moment. Uh, but we do need people to be here to keep things going and if we want the forest to be maintained uh, to have roads that lead into the nature reserves uh, and that's why I came here because I like the nature here uh, we do need a certain am amount of people to be around and uh, if they are Japanese, great if they are foreigners, great uh, but any one person moving in will keep uh, the, the grocer employed uh, they will uh, use the they will use the road, and once a few people are using the road, the road will be maintained. So if no one's staying here, if all the houses go vacant, then there's no incentive for the government to uh, repair the roads once there's a pothole. And I've seen this in other parts of Japan, like Kamiyama in Shikoku. Once a few people move in, just a couple of people, a lot of others move in, and the whole place gets uh, transformed. So I think. Of course, it doesn't happen in a few years. It happens in like 20 to 50 years. Kamiyama took like well over 30 years to get popular to where it is now. Uh, and I think Ryujin Mura, because we have, uh, we have a lot of nature, a lot of water, uh, friendly people, enough infrastructure, and uh, we are close enough to places like the Kumano Kodo, UNESCO site. Uh, we have Ryujin Onsen, a great uh, hot spring with good water. Uh, the Ryokans are still bringing in lots of customers. Uh, not as many as we want, but enough. Um, there's still hope for the village to be revived and uh, anybody moving in, just a single person moving in would be really important to the community here. We are going to Kazue-san's house. Kazue-san is a good friend of ours who has been helping out with the cafe and uh, we are going to a place for lunch. Uh, it's just down the road there. Hi! ごにちは。皆さんのおばやの料理しかないからって言っといて。いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、い